Welcome back, Survivors! I'm the Survival Vist, and we return to our last week of Jurassic Park Revolution The Outcast Science Wars DLC. Contrary to what I said in the previous episode or two, we're going to change up how this last week is going to go. I'm going to go on to Isla Trona for this hunt, just kind of show off a little bit of that map, explore it, cover it as I have like the other maps from this uh, DLC series, and then the last two episodes I'm going to do hunting requests that have come in from a couple weeks ago in the comments. I didn't really think I would be taking the hunting requests because all that this DLC has mostly been is new dinosaurs, the one map we spent a week on, and that's been it. There's been no new weapons, no other new maps, it's just been the dinosaur species that we've been getting pretty steadily, so these last two hunting requests that I will do are nice way just to like bring a little bit of community involvement and wrap us up with something a bit different than just trying to show off a bit directionless of what we have. I do also want to comment and say I do know Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunt has come out on Steam. I'm going to wait a while before I do cover it, because right now, as of recording this, there's still some technical troubles that Digital Dreams is having with giving everybody who owns a copy of Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunt Reborn already the free copy of Dinosaur Hunt they said they would. There are some thoughts I need to organize and put together considering the, uh, what is it? like? Cretaceous Terror DLC, basically the DLC that just released with it on Steam. Because there is some stuff to talk about with that. And yeah, I just need some more time for a Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunt video that I will get to when I can, but it's not going to be the next series I cover, just so that way there's a little bit more time and a bit of a break from that. But we're going to focus again. Get Jurassic Park Revolution, Outcast Dino's DLC fully done out of its way, and then in another video I'll talk a little bit about Dinosaur Hunt and then get into the new Carnivore series, or the returning Carnivore series I'll get to. Everything looks pretty good though, I'm going to use the radar just that way as I talk I know I'm a little safer to or not, and just see if we can get a few more points gathered together before we have, before we do have the hunting request that I'll tackle in the next episode or two. So everything looks good, let's stop our talking for now and get into this new hunt on Isla Tronar. For Jurassic Park, <clears throat> oh, something in my throat there. Jurassic Park Revolution: The Outcast Dinosaurs DLC. Okay, we are loaded into Isla Tronar now. I'm just going to check the map. You might notice a little bit of a change in the uh, dots on the map compared to some of the other episodes, and that's because you can also see Trippy Ground too. For whatever reason, I've been starting to have a lot of tr technical troubles getting these last few episodes of Jurassic Park. Right? This last episode or last week of Jurassic Park Revolution episodes done properly, just like starting off. I've been running into crash after five minutes in the hunt, like I had in the Modders Edition. I ran into a lot of the uh, weird double-stepping issue on the map before. I'm basically just going to look at getting Jurassic Park Revolution, the Outcast Dinosaurs DLC done. Then with the other Carnivore series I'm doing, I think I might have to take a break from Carnivores for a while, because I... No, I think that's a Baryonyx coming in. Maybe coming in or just up ahead. It's not like the gameplay content itself that's a problem. It's all the technical troubles that seem to keep coming because of the age that uh, just the carnivores mods are for their engines and that. Okay, we're starting things off with a bit of an action-packed pair. Baryonyx and Deinonychus, though. Looks like you got stabbed through the skull by the Dino tail, or the Deinonychus tail. Yeah, so with those two taken care of, I think we can work our way south and go for some others. But yeah, I've been getting so many technical issues trying to run the Carnivore's games and mods. It varies, like, every single mod or game seems to have its own little quirks that you have to do to try to get it running right. The Mods Edition engine ones, there's still the 5 minute crash I've been running into that have to wait for a fix or whatever there. It might even be that it's not actually from the mods themselves, but it's from other updates to, like, Windows or stuff like that which could impact it. And everybody's computers are all a little bit different, so it's super hard narrowing down what each specific problem could be from, or what the causes could be to them. 
So the next two series I'm doing aren't actually using uh, any of the legacy carnivore stuff to them. That might narrow down what the next series is going to be, but uh, I figure you guys probably might not mind a hint or two. Oh, okay, so the other one's an Apatosaurus. I just see about getting a few pot shots off on them. Yeah, so the Pato is the one that's gone off that way. That's to the southeast. Oh, we did get the Wurhurasaurus. Okay, so we can focus on the Pato on its way out. But, yeah, so I have to see after I'll do the uh, Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunt series or the coverage of that if I am going to keep going with the Carnivore's mods. It could be something with my computer, but I'm not going to go through a lot of big steps in that for how it could take in that. I'm not breaking my computer, going to possibly break the computer just to try for, again, fixing a lot of these issues that I seem to be having. I've tried doing a few steps and things. Certain ones, you don't run into problems. Other ones, you do. It's hard to say what it is that could cause them. And with how many years I have been doing carnivores, I think I could use a little bit of a break, but that's going to come in probably two or three months, because I do have carn- I'm going to be doing Carnivore's World again as the next series, might as well just put that out there so that way you guys do know. Carnivore's World I'll be spending a couple of weeks or so on, and then Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunt I'm probably going to do another two or three weeks with. I do want to, again, give that some time in case there are any more patches or workings that have to be done for that mod to... Like, with its just live release, there might be some performance or technical troubles and bugs to be fixed out. But give some time for that to be done if it must. And then see where I'm at after that. There we go. Okay, so we'll keep working our way east, see what some of these are over here. But that, I think, covers everything outside of Revolution right now. Let's focus on Revolution itself again, and take a little bit of time talking over Tronark, because it is a bit of an interesting map to end off with. It's not quite as rugged and rough as Murta was. It's got quite a bit of room to it compared to Penna or other maps. It kind of fits as, like a moderate difficulty map. Oh, that's just you snoozing, okay. Because on the one hand, I think your worst, or the most difficult maps are the ones that have the super hard to read terrain, and hard to keep a beat on the animals because they're going up and down, bobbing a lot. They can a little bit on Tronar, but certain areas are definitely worse than others. And yeah, we'll take this out, because this is just so handy to use as, like, self-defense weapon. But you also have areas like this here, where I feel like I'm actually pretty safe from anything that might be too close. Just trying to see what that is to the northeast-ish. Oh, okay, I guess it's an Aliaramus. Yeah, like, if he decides to come in, it... It's not super rough and rugged where I'm not going to be able to keep eyes on him as he's approaching and it's down into the clutch of having to try to take him down. I'll have some room and distance to deal with him. Murta or Penna are some maps that are a lot more... Oh, and he's running off. There's another thing about how timid they are. No, oh, well, maybe he was. I... I thought he was running, but now I don't know. Okay, yeah, somebody picked us up by scent. I'm not sure what exactly went running off, unless maybe that was the Aliaramus trying to find a way out. But yeah, with all the technical troubles I keep running into when it's come to carnivores, it's kind of at the point where I think I need a little bit of a break and see how things want to go forward for the channel and just what content I'll get into next. I still will do Carnivore's World, I've got Dinosaur Hunt I'll cover, but past that, I'm going to probably take a bit of a breather and see about something else. I'm, trying, I'm even trying to think of how long I have been covering Carnivore's content too. 
Because, like, I know this... No, actually, that's a interesting little... Oh, that's a nest down there for something. Ah, oh, see, yeah, I am in a really bad spot trying to get some of these guys, because... The wind is basically keeping right northwards, so that's sending that Aliuramus out. But there is another animal that's... Up ahead, but I can't tell exactly what it is. Okay, I think it's on the run now, so maybe if I get up here, I can at least see what it is going. I think they're both Aliuramus, it's just that they both... Oh, no! Monza Tenanto. Yeah, so that's just sending them both up north. I'll probably keep after them. But again, it's... You have to try to sneak in... Well, granted, this was a pretty bad approach on my end. I can understand why these guys have picked me up, but... For how Revolution is and how timid the dinosaurs can be in it, I can see why there are so many troubles and issues. And just, like, trying to get close for some of the weapons to be as accurate as you want them to be. And yeah, that... Ah, oh, the wind still wants to just be in proper bugger to us. It, usually the wind will sway left and right a bit, so it's more like a cone of where the wind is from. But it seems like for this hunt, it does not want to change at all from just straight north. The dinosaur compass is working correctly this episode. Yeah, we're closing the gap, so we'll probably start seeing them soon. Oh, speaking of... Yeah, you feel like you're a pretty good speed. It's, I think, the Deinonychus that... Deni or the Deinonychus and the Yangchuanosaurus that feel like their speed is so quick, you might not have the time to be able to respond right to them. But again, it's like certain animals like the Aliuramus are slower and you can deal with them. Others, like the Deinonychuses, are so quick, you they're harder to. It's one of the weirder maws. It does have a lot of variety to it. But it's also kind of strange to tackle at all. Okay, so the Tonto is kind of stuck up here, so... I actually wouldn't be surprised if he gets... Oh, actually, it's two Tonto's. Okay, I think that might be... Okay, there's one down. There's the other. Yeah, I had a feeling I was going to getting close enough that they were going to turn aggressive towards me. And we still have the SMG and the SPAS-12. So I'll just try seeing about getting one or two more. Then I'll go in the trophy room, clear it all out. That way when I do the request hunts, we can see everything we got from each request in the trophy room, no problem. It does seem like if I want the best stability for covering Carnivore's mods, I do need to use 3DFX Glide, which... It's not terrible to use, but you might be able to notice there are parts where, like, the map has the lines of geometry to it. There is the trippy acid ground. It's just... And it almost seems like it could vary too. Oh, actually, Myasaura. Or is it Myasaura or Myasauria? I can't remember. But it looks like we might actually have a lot of things getting... Clustered up over here. Like, is that an Myasaura? Is that a. Oh, yeah, it is a Myasaura. Let me just see. Yeah, there's a grouping of quite a few animals over here. But I don't know if they can actually, like, keep going westwards or not. Because there is a little bit of a river here. Actually, right to our south, there's... Oh. Yeah, we're kind of brain dead, weren't you? 
Oh. Slow, but it can still be a bullet spawnage. Well, so much for those points. Yeah, if I were to give a quick summary of where I think they could use some adjustments to uh, Jurassic Park Revolution, just how it is. The dinosaurs have too much health if you're not hitting the mortal zone. And the weapons could use better iron sights so that way they feel a little easier to work with and operate with. Like, the QBZ is one especially, even the MP5, where if you do have the big circle iron sight, it should feel like your shots won't be outside of the circle at all. But trying to use the QBZ, it does feel like it can be. Again, I'm not the best shot, but if your sights could be a bit better designed, I think it would help a bit more there too. But let me go clear out the trophy room and that'll prepare us for uh, the next couple episodes to end off uh, Outcast Dino DLC with. Okay, here we are in the trophy room, and yeah, we're just going to go through clearing all this stuff out. The the skins for these guys do feel like they would be pretty fitting for JPOG, or Dress Park Operation Genesis, and I am i can't remember if I mentioned this before or not. I've had to like try re-recording this so many times, I've forgotten what I have and haven't mentioned each time. But the reason for the name of the Outcast Dinosaurs DLC is because the full roster of animals here were intended to be with Jurassic Park Operation Genesis on release, but they were cut in development. The only one I'm not sure of is the Yangtronosaurus, if that was supposed to be or not, because it feels like that one's only more recently getting some focus to it, but it could be possible it was meant to be with that, with the mod as, or sorry, with JPOG as well. But yeah, you can see things like the Apatosaurus, the Plodocuses, the Tenanto, these do feel like they would be pretty nice additions to have in the JPOG roster. It's just that de uh, development cuts can be a painful thing when it comes to uh, video game development. Yeah, a lot of them, they all do feel like they'd fit. The textures are pretty nice. The Baryonyx especially, because I don't think we have that many dinosaurs that have this more natural greenish color to them that would look like they were meant to blend in. Like, the Iguanodon, I can see the colors in that, almost like sexual dimorphism, trying to have a bigger display on the males for the females. And then the Yangchuans... I mean, it does feel a little bit like a boring skin, but it is... It still feels like Jurassic Park fitting. But we'll send you guys on your way, and that'll clear us all for the next couple of hunts to go. So, goodbye to you and you. There we go. Trophy room is all cleared out of every animal now, so depending on how we do in these request hunts, we will have to show off what we've gotten there. But thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of Dress Park Revolution, the Outcast Dinosaurs DLC. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give a like, and if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave comments right down below. There is a link to uh, the Dress Park Revolution Mod DB page right in the video description because I did have a comment on that. If you go on to there, you can find more information about the base mod, links to the DLC, uh, the JPOG skin pack that there is, the grass patch, and more. So, if you guys want to check it out, it's right there in the description for you. Until I do see you in the next video, though, survivors, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.